Hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate all of you coming out. Um, this is uh, a real joy for me because this is something I've dreamt about uh, for a long time, having not only being able to share this film with people, but having uh, all these people in this space. So for all of you wondering where the hell am I, this is a place called the Huron Substation. It is an old trolley station from 1906. We are turning it into a theater for off-Broadway style plays and concerts and dinners and things like that. You're all welcome to come. We also rent it out. Anyway, uh, uh, so we're gonna start the film in a second. And then we're going to have three. We're going to have a Q and A with Elizabeth Banks, who I'm very grateful to have here. My boss. Um, and then we are going to have three wonderful musicians play. Uh, I want to thank Strong Roots for hosting this event. I want to thank. Uh, oh, hi, Jesse. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Emma Flannery, who did a lot of work to make this happen. I want to thank Natalie Metzger, uh, my wonderful producer who stuff with this movie. So, take a breath, relax, enjoy the movie. conversation about just where this came from and why and all of it but most importantly I'm just excited for any artist and a friend who I love and adore who I think is so talented already to be exploring expanding deciding to like reach for more you, you grew up here in LA you grew up you know a alongside this business and to see you doing something like this, blossoming, writing, directing, I'm sure you like helped Natalie produce, this, bringing together these collaborators. It really just warms, it's just amazing. It's congratulations. I'm very, very proud of you. I've never had to be actual human parents are here, but I'm so <laughs> Okay, so that was me heaping praise. I'm gonna do this from my phone, because it's 2023. Um, <laughs> All right, so we, we all, um, I love that we all just got to watch this together. Oh, this is done. No, it's here. Um, so can we just start with the big picture of the themes? Family, black sheep, fame, all of it. Like, where did this come from? <laughs> what were you inspired by? What made you put it to paper? Um, I was working on a story about brothers for a long time. Uh, and then I was coming up with other ideas and they kind of collided. Um, but I think for me, the, the story, you know, is um, about what can happen between people who love each other when this thing called success, and that can be in any industry, comes into the room and what that can do to people. And I was drawing on a whole bunch of different relationships. You know, I've been the person who was really lucky and had success. I've also been the person sitting across from a friend of mine and who I love and we have one lunch and it's, we don't get to see each other very often and I feel funny and I don't know why and I don't like that. And maybe they're doing something exciting and I feel, you know, envious or, 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 or whatever that is. And I think growing up in Los Angeles too, um, uh, Sometimes it feels, you know, like very scary to walk around when you don't feel like you're doing well. When you feel like someone's going to ask you at a party, you know, what are you up to? And you don't have a good answer, you know. <laughs> and, and, 
and uh, there's something sad about that to me. So that was the thematic kind of background. Um, I want to talk a little bit to some of your collaborators. So Natalie, um, you know, everyone needs collaborators. What, how did you come on board? What did you think Alden was trying to say? And why did you want to be so supportive? And thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, I, uh, we met in 2019? 20, yeah, maybe. Time makes no sense to any of us. It was, it was pre-pandemic. Um, it, it was a whole lifetime ago. Um, and uh, yeah, a, a mutual friend had put us in touch and I read the script and I like sobbed for a long time after reading it. And um, uh, I think there's this, uh, this idea of, of, of miscommunications, of, of not realizing, of not reaching out to someone because you think that they don't want you to reach out, but actually they are feeling the same way and there's so much deep love. Um, there, but it's not shared, and uh, how those can, like, how, how it often happens with family. And so, um, yeah, it just affected me on a really emotional level, and then we chatted about it, and um, and I was really excited by how he wanted to approach it. He wanted to shoot on celluloid. He wanted to spend days rehearsing with the actors before we shot. Um, he, like, really wanted to, like, create that, that family vibe with all the actors together, like, cooking dinners together, or hanging out, like chatting through backstories, and I was just really um, impressed with his vision and was excited to help out in whatever way. And I, I just want to quickly say, I've never worked with somebody like Natalie. She came on board before the pandemic. We were saying, well, maybe we'll go in you know, February of 2020 or something. We had the first meeting for it. The day was announced as a national emergency, and for three years, she didn't miss the beat for three years through yeah. seeing this together. So it was and tonight is what that persistence gets you, you know, it's amazing. So you spoke about uh, this rehearsal process. I want to ask Lisa, were you a part of those dinners? What was it like being directed by a fellow actor? I, it was great because he approaches directing in the same way I imagine approaches acting, which is uh, creating a before the first scene. So that's what we spent a lot of time doing. We were creating a life so that when we walked into a scene, we had this whole life built up that we carried with us. And that was really beautiful. You just don't get to do that very often. And I think he thought, I need an overbearing mom. So he, he offered it to me, which was really nice. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> um, but no, it was beautiful. It was a great process. And did you, um, uh, because I love learning how people made things, um, and I know, and in Hollywood, I think everyone always wants to know the brass tacks, like, how'd you do it, you know? Um, like, how, how many days did you shoot? Why film? Like, what, what were this behind some of your decisions? Did you storyboard also? Did you share everything with the actors? I know you, and I know how collaborative you can be, and I know how much information you want as an actor. So I assume, but I'd love to know yeah. what you were willing to share with everybody. So you brought it together. Um, yeah, well, uh, the rehearsal process was super important to me um, for the reasons that Lisa said. Lisa was unbelievable, and, and someone of her stature being willing to be this down for four days. So we would do marriage counseling over Zoom with her and Nick Searcy, who played her husband, and we would do um, family family dinners. That we did an improv where Nick, my brother, and I are like uh, in middle school, and she finds out that her husband fell off the wagon, and it's her birthday, and she has to hide that from the kids. So we would do that for like hours, and it just was so fun, and, and the fact that she was so willing to do it, and Nick Robinson, who was, who was wonderful as well. Um, and that was because uh, I wanted you to believe this was a family, and I wanted you to believe that there was details and that there was a world on the screen of sort of um, idiosyncrasy. Rachel Getting Married is a movie I thought about a lot that really feels that way, because a lot of times, as you obviously know, it's, this is your mom, and uh, <laughs> you, you, you hate her. You're going, oh, hi, nice to meet you. Okay, action. I hate you, you know? And, and you have to sort of, fight against all these instincts to get along with people. And, and when you have that rehearsal process, you get to know each other and you, you sink in. Uh, film was because I love film. Um, and I just, 
especially now we see so many images and there's just something about it still to me. So Natalie fought hard. We had a lot of help. Steve Bellman is here, who was incredibly helpful with us. So thank you, Steve. Uh, and Adam Kodak. Um, and film is, yeah, I'm a huge uh, advocate for it. And it was especially a story that's about being inside of a family and these feelings, feeling, you know, you, you feel the thing, it's that texture. Um, I think that was it. How, how did you find your other collaborators, like your DP? Like how, wh how, why, and how was everybody down? Your production designer, all of that Talk a little bit about um, exploring this with those fellows. Um, I'll speak a little to that and then I'll give it to Natalie. But uh, Natalie was so instrumental in that because Natalie has this huge network of people that are really talented. She's kind of built this whole community with Matt Miller, her partner. Um, and so there were all these people. And what was really fun with this is like, you know, there were certain positions where I had access to certain people who were like, yeah, I'll do it, you know, but they would like, they were doing it as a favor and you could feel that. And if I, I, and there were certain people who were established and worked on it, certain people who were new, but you get that hunger from somebody who really cares, who really gives a shit about the movie and they're, they're really like, you know, this isn't like, yeah, sure, you know, and it changes what the room feels like, you know, uh, it changes the boom operator being interested in the scene changes the way the scene feels in the room. Um, and so, a lot of meetings. Like That's that. kind of so meta when you think about the scene in between the brothers, yeah. right? Like, yeah. what is in there <laughs> yeah. when you're asking for a favor yeah. versus when you're doing it out of love? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that was a good scene for that, too, because Nick and I talked about doing it for years, and he was the first person I wanted. And, uh, you know, he has a kind of a vulnerability that you just can feel really quickly. And I needed that. I can turn my phone off. Yeah. Um, I remember the first time I saw Nick, I think I saw him in a, in a small film at Sundance, and I was like, he's the new Johnny Depp. Yeah, like, I yeah him. he's really, really magnetic. He's and special. You, just, you don't have much time with him to get to know him, and so he just reads really clearly and is smart and uh, was the right age. But I'll let Natalie speak that too, finding people. Yeah, crewing up. Yeah, um, we have some of our crew here. Um, ben Mullen, the cinematographer, you know, Wolf's production designer, Tracy Pay, and Dan. They all did such an amazing job, and I think, uh, you know, Alden really spoke to it where there was so much passion from all of the collaborators that. Uh, everyone just went above and beyond to make this film something really, really special. Um, uh, I mean, Hannah transformed that, like, like at the house, and, and uh, our, our our location owner, where we filmed, is even here. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and 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 you know, and Tori even just like letting us film in her home and like take, taking over um, the whole space. Uh, everyone was just so generous because I think everyone just really connected with this story and there was so much relatability um, with it that everyone just like really wanted to do a good job with it. What was the biggest um, surprise during the process? I, I find that directing is often like having this incredible vision and then just holding on to it as hard as possible through all of the surprises that are bound to come, <laughs> you know? Like, oh, the truck didn't show up, or whatever, and we still have to figure it out today. Right. How did you feel? The guy who plays the bear gets sick or something. Yes. Um, <laughs> he had COVID. That's yeah. inside. <laughs> um, uh, what was the biggest surprise? When I got to the editing room, I did very few close-ups, and I thought I had done a ton. Because um, uh, I just, w when you're inside of it, as you know, it's yeah. a different thing. And it was fun because we could experiment, we could, you know, throw it sideways, and I knew that I'm not gonna, you know, I can fail, basically, because I have the final say. So, um, that was, uh, uh, that was a surprise, and... Wait, I don't yeah. understand, the whole film is, like, close-ups. Yeah. <laughs> are you saying, basically, those are, like, single takes? Because that's no, what you did? No, like, three, maybe, for some of them, okay. but we ended up with all these mediums that we used for, like, one second. Yeah. And I was, but, you know, it like, was like, well, we don't have it yet, so we do seven mediums. Anyway, it's technical. It's, no, it's I'm fascinated with this because I, yeah. I actually, one of the things I, I um, think is praiseworthy is, the clo is how close you kept the camera almost the entire time, right? So you feel the environment around you, you feel the family around you, but you really are in each person's, yeah. you know, relationship, you know? Yeah. You and the dad, you and the brother, you and the car, you listening to, you know? 
It's so I'm, I'm, it's amazing to me to hear that that was not a choice beforehand, yeah. but was a surprising choice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, are you yeah. meant to do more of it? Yeah, I, 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 we got into the edit room and I was like, wait, we don't have three. Because I'd done seven, so I was like, well, we, we kind of have it. Yeah. And then we'd go to the close ups and I just thought we did a lot more, so. Yeah. You know what though, but did you, I mean, I love, answer, I, no, but I was, yeah, I was so into it, I love rehearsing in the wide, knowing yes. they're gonna go close. Right, exactly. So I get to rehearse now, and speaking of acting, acting. were you always gonna direct yourself? Yeah. And did you, yeah. what, how was that, was that challenging, or were you I, excited I by it? I love it, I love it, because, kind of like I said, you can, you can try things out that you know are terrible, and, um, and you can also kind of, you know, I wanted the scene between me and Nick to feel genuinely tense. So you can say things off camera, or you can try things out, you can kind of push it, as opposed to having to whisper that into another actor's ear. You're inside of it. And it was good that I was playing a, a character who was really sweaty and tired and running around a lot, because I was really sweaty and tired and running around a lot. Um, and I gained 20 pounds for the movie, and so I was really sweaty. Uh, I was like losing the milkshake I drank the night before. But, um, you know, so, and, yeah. Yeah, the midnight milkshake. Exactly. And, yeah, I know about those. Um, they don't affect me. Uh, how, I, I, what, so we asked about challenges, we asked about directing yourself. Um, how has this experience affected you as an artist? Are you done acting? Has it said? What's next? Um, no, I'll always love acting. That's always the first thing. I don't. No one, you know, I've been incredibly lucky to work with people like yourself, and when you're working with a great director, you can have a great time, and I told you that was such a great experience for me. It really reminded me that I could go out and act more. Um, uh, but, uh, but often you aren't with a great director, and you've done, you know, 10, 15 movies, and you're working with somebody who hasn't, and, and also it's just what you feel inside of yourself, and um, uh, so, this experience made me like so hungry to do this as much as possible because it was like getting to take all the things I've learned from so many people and create like you know as close to a utopia as I can on a set of what I would want things to be like. So um, I just love it. <laughs> and I can promise it's always a utopia <laughs> when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this has been just an amazing experience. Does anyone have a question for Alden that I didn't ask? Yeah, I, I, I know that nobody expected this, but why not? Let's take a question from the audience. Yeah. Uh, so say, what is the plan for the short thing? Short thing going 100 Well, I've always like, you know, part of Natalie and I's conversation around this was always to put it out there as a film. And so right now we're showing it to people and we're playing a lot of different festivals and we're seeing what that goes, you know, how that goes. And then, and, and so far it's been really, really wonderful, really gratifying, this being the best. Um, but uh, the, the plan is to put it out there next year at some point as a film and, you know, promote it as such. So, thanks. Yeah. Um. Uh, Any of the things that you've learned now, is there anything you've learned now that you would want to tell yourself 10 years ago? Uh, right, every day. I, 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 there's a lot of people in this room that I went to college with, and we would sit around and drink and talk in a very grandiose way about what we wanted to do and revolution and film and all these things. And you can't do anything without the vehicle of a great piece of writing and a great piece of material. And if you don't sort of make yourself a servant to that process, which is so hard, then you don't have anything to do with all that fervor. And so um, I would have been writing every single day instead of talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when you first thought of this idea, She asked, if, she asked if that was the original ending. Um, yeah, I, I, I worked on this and I was working on a TV show and I kind of heard the conversation between the two brothers in my head and I kind of said, I can't, I gotta finish this TV show and I had four more days and I filmed the four days and I came back to LA and I wrote it. Um, it's something I've been working on for a long time, but when I wrote it, it all came kind of out in one thing. And then 
I revised it for a long time. We did table reads and recorded those table reads. We did an animatic where we did storyboards to answer your earlier question and did kind of what Pixar does where you take it and create like an animated version of it and we put the table read underneath that so we could watch it as a film because I knew I was going to be in it and I wasn't going to be able to make editorial decisions. So, um, so we did, did as much of that, but the ending uh, was, was, yeah, always that, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you could have uh, started just as a director, would you have liked it that more? Would I have liked it more? Uh, start as a director. To, to start as a director instead of a filmmaker? I mean, instead of an actor, whatever I am. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, no, because I wouldn't have had the opportunity to learn the things that I got to learn. You know, when filmmakers are starting, they're like, you know, maybe they've been on a set as a crew member. I've gotten a front row seat to work with some of the greatest directors in the world. So um, I, I, that has been both educational and inspiring on a deep level. Yeah. Um, what does Jordan Kovic Um, I think it really comes down to every single person feeling involved in a real way. I think it, 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 you know, people will show up, sort of, I show up like this sometimes, just ready to do another job. And if you can bring people into the experience and get them to feel like that you're sharing what the heart of this thing is with them, then it, there's a sense of meaning behind it, then everybody gives a very different, there's a different quality to everybody's work, I think. And um, and so it looks like that. I mean, we, and then that ends up just being very fun and easy. All right, we'll take one more question. I'm going to take it from you because you had a hand before. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> pacing is essential to any short film success. Uh, when you were working out the pacing of this short, was it something you thought about a lot in your screenwriting process, or is that something that happened when you were creating the animatic, animatics, or anything like that? Um, I wrote it as a one -er, um, which I was, yeah, that's, that's the correct response. Um, and then I had someone uh, who's here told me, you should not do this as a one -er. And I went, you know what, man, you don't get it. And then, uh, and then I, thank God, I didn't do it as a one -er. Um <laughs> Uh, but but that defined the pacing because it's it's as close to in real time as possible. The goal is to be stuck with him, you know, as he's stuck with himself. Oh, thank you for asking. Great, great uh, the oneer is an unbroken single take. So if I if I shot, uh, uh, you know, if you, you film and you don't cut and you do it for a long time. Like he he would have taken us into every scene, into every right. room, etc. And you would have had to yeah do get wait for him to walk good. down the hallway. Exactly. And, and light a cigarette. It's terrible. Every other thing that would have happened. It's such a, a bad idea. Like, um, exactly. A bit of a twenty. 700 hours <laughs> 28 pages, yeah. And the, so there's a 30 minute movie that now is a 15 minute movie. So, yeah. yeah. And the music was amazing. I, we didn't even get to talk about the music, yeah, which I'm sure added job. so much. It was yeah. so good. It had so much to so many of those scenes. And I know when I was a young filmmaker, I like figuring out how to use music was just so integral with the process. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the crafts on this are awesome. Everybody did a great job. Um, thank you all so much for thank coming. You thank you so much. Much. I just want to thank our tonight's spot uh, that you hear on Substation. Yeah. Strong Roots. Yeah. Archer Roots Wine yeah. is here. You guys should all go and enjoy and praise this fine thank filmmaker. He's an excellent storyteller. Thank you very much. And there's clearly so much more to come. Thank to you. Come. And in, in about 10, 15 minutes, we have oh, three musicians who are going to play in this room and are phenomenal. So enjoy, have some food. Thank you very much. Thank you.